All right, thank you so much for coming on our podcast today. So would you mind telling us your name and a little bit about um, maybe some of your business background, some of the things you've done in the past? Definitely. My name is Tina Reed. My maiden name is Fonoy Moana. It's a big family here on the North Shore. Um, my husband and I, we have kind of a his, hers, and ours thing with businesses. Um, together we started Redwood Therapy and Youth Services, okay. which is a foster care agency and outpatient mental health therapy in Utah. Okay. Um, then we relocated to American Samoa, and I started Cheat Day Bakery, which is kind of a dessert bar, okay. and the only one of its kind um, in American Samoa on our island. Oh, but people love it there. It's awesome. I like to incorporate local ingredients and use things in innovative ways. Cool. So I really enjoy that. Um, I also own Afakasi Apparel, which is a small clothing line okay. that I export. And um, and then my husband owns a car rental business, so we definitely enjoy entrepreneurship. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that you have so many different um, different like entrepreneurial business kind of like avenues to go down. Very I was different. reading an article the other day, and it was talking about how some of the top millionaires and billionaires in America have multiple revenue streams. I mean, you you look at Elon Musk like. SpaceX and yes. Tesla and like Solar City, he's got a, a wide range. For you guys, like, what do you do to balance all those businesses? Because that's a lot, right? And to give your full brain power to those things. Um, it is a lot. It's definitely a lot. On top of that, we have four children. My husband's a right. state president, and it, I mean, it's definitely a lot. But I don't know. I really think Nike's so smart with their logo. You just do it. <laughs> you just move forward. You just do it one step at a time. And um, honestly, I'm, we just try to be very prayerful in everything that we do and dedicate our time that way um, and just feel inspired and that's where, we, that's where we're led. That's really cool. So I'm assuming, you know, running like four businesses, you guys have probably mastered the art, the art of outsourcing and kind of getting your, not, not, working for your, not working in your business, but on your business, you know? For sure. What kind of, I, don't, I guess, insights can you share with uh, people listening about how they might be able to do that with their business, maybe if they're stuck in it, you know? Sure, I feel like that's one of the hardest things is to get other people to run your business for you because no one will give it what you will give it. It's not mm -hmm. their baby. Right. Um, and so it's really hard. And so from my, from my experience, I just will do baby steps. We'll just start off with literally in my bakery, my head baker now, she started off sweeping floors, not even washing dishes. <laughs> she started sweeping floors and then I gave her dishes and we just slowly grew. I grew trust with her and um, slowly incorporated her into the business and now she's able, to, she's running everything while I'm gone. Um, same with Redwood Therapy and Youth Services. Everything is being run by them there. And we just oversee it and try to try to get it to grow, but it's definitely a process. And I don't know that we've mastered it, but we're working right. on it. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, so, what are I guess? How do you allocate your time to your different, you know, like your different businesses? Like, how do you decide which businesses you kind of need to put more brain power, or more work into in like one given day, or maybe in like one given week? How does that kind of work for you? Definitely. Some, I mean, there's definitely a pecking order of what's going on. My um, bakery business, it, we've only had our storefront for just over a year. Mm -hmm. And so right now that's what I focus on primarily. Um, the clothing line is a little bit further on the list. And then because it's the his, hers, and ours, my husband takes care of, of the other two. Okay, cool. Um, but we kind of divide and conquer. And we, for us, working together it has been absolutely beneficial. We help each other, we pull each other up, and we support each other. That's really cool. I feel like I have heard from different people that working in business as like a couple, it's like stressful on their marriage. It kind of strains it. For you guys, I guess, what has been your experience and maybe what has been the ways you've made it work? Absolutely. It is not for everybody. I can absolutely say that. For us, it has worked really, really well, which is why we continue to do it. Um, but it's not for everybody. You've just got to see if it works. And if it doesn't work, that doesn't mean your, ma your marriage is a failure. Right. It just means that that part doesn't work for you and that's okay. For us, it works and I'm, I'm grateful for that. That's really cool. What inspired you guys to get into entrepreneurship? Has this been something you've always done? Have you come around to it? Um, we both individually are very much, we like to think outside the box. We like to do things differently. Um, my husband's family, they all, well not all, but most of them are entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and so he grew up with that kind of a thing. Um, my family, not so much, but my parents definitely just let me do my thing. I once said, thank you for supporting me, thank you for doing all these things, and my mom said, we just stayed out of your way. <laughs> and I said, oh, well thanks for that too. 
And so, you know, we just always are into doing things differently and thinking outside of the box. That's really cool. And I mean, hearing your business ideas, that's a lot of these things are very outside of the box and kind of new ways to do things. Um, what are some of the ways uh, a lot of people here, you know, starting new businesses might have found products or means, but they're trying to get the word out. What are ways that you, I guess it's different for every business, but what are some ways that you go about advertising your, your business or marketing your different businesses? I think a lot of it depends on your locality. Because we're in American Samoa, um, the ways that I market are very different than the ways that I marketed in Utah. Mm -hmm. um, in American Samoa, not a lot of people are on Snapchat or Instagram, but everybody's still on Facebook. Right. Whereas I understand in the States, Facebook isn't as popular anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess you have to understand your market right. and what's already working mm -hmm. um, and then feed off of that. I don't need to convert my whole island to Instagram. I need to go off of what is currently working. Right. Um, right. And so I do lots of things. As an entrepreneur, you have to be willing to invest in yourself, do giveaways, and get people interested rather than just expecting them to, to buy, buy large quantities for the full amount initially. Right. You've got to get them invested. Totally. So something I'm super curious about that I think probably a lot of people are asking themselves is, you know, you started out in Utah and then you moved your whole family to American Samoa. That seems like a really big adventure, probably a really big step in your life. What, what kind of inspired you guys to do that? And how has your experience been doing it? Well, inspiration is definitely the word that comes to mind because um, everything, there was no reason for us to move. Our business, Redwood Therapy Services, was doing phenomenal. We had an excellent, um, we had all of our family there, we had lots of great friends there, we had our house. There was no reason for us to move um, because in American Samoa, minimum wage is $5 an hour. Wow. So it really didn't make sense other than we felt very strongly in the temple that the Lord had that in mind for us. And so... When we felt like it was in the Lord's timing, we went, and we did not know why we were going. We went and had a very difficult time figuring things out. Politics and different things work differently there. Even getting a business license can be wow. very difficult, um, and it made no sense. But we just felt like we would continue to go by the Spirit. And my husband actually was called a stake president, um, where Elder Vincent Halleck said this was the reason why you were called to come here. That's really cool. So you had that prompt and you followed through and then you found out later. The... Exactly. Two and a half years later, we were we were, didn't know what we were doing there. We were looking at coming back um, and my husband got called in to just be interviewed for some random reason. Um, he wasn't supposed to be interviewed. And because of that, then we had a purpose and we mm -hmm. knew where the Lord wanted us and we never looked back from there. That's really cool. I feel like in life and in business, you know, it's what kind of drives us is finding a purpose in what we do. For you guys, um, I, I see like a big purpose, you know, you know why you went to American Samoa, why you started those businesses. And even when you were in Utah, right, like obviously that um, therapy business sounds like there, it was very purpose driven. For very you, what much. is like the role of like purposes in the, the businesses you start? It's funny because what I would have initially answered for each business is different than how I see it now. Uh -huh. For um, for my bakery, for example, I thought that I just wanted to I just wanted to do something. This is something I'm good at. But since then, I've realized that my purpose isn't what I originally intended. My purpose is I provided jobs for all these women and provided a safe place for them to mm -hmm. be. I provided a location for families to come and to unite, for children to come with their parents, for couples to go for date night because those things aren't really pertinent on our island and so mm -hmm. I've created a safe space and to me that is so valuable and much more so than what I had originally anticipated. That's really cool because I feel like with a lot of entrepreneurs when you like you have a business people will be like gung-ho and all pumped up about their business and they'll start it but I feel like it's pretty easy in that first you know year when you see some of the major pitfalls or setbacks to kind of get a little burnout. I feel sure. like when you have those purposes in your business that's what can help you continue to love it and to continue to do it right you, it's kind of giving back to you and your purpose in a way definitely support is so important and so I try to now that I've been in business with our different businesses for a while I try to do that kind of pay it forward mm -hmm. and do that for other people and so that's why I think a part of this competition is so exciting and amazing to see to see the students do things similar that's super cool um, well we're super grateful to have you here and to be able to get your wealth of knowledge um, 
Before we go, what is maybe one piece of advice you would give to students here that are planning on, you know, starting their own business or they just started their own business? Something that can maybe help them to keep going or reach their full potential in business? What's like a good piece of advice you could give them? Um, a piece of advice that for me personally would just be to don't be in your head. For me, I wanted all my ducks in a row. I wanted everything there, but we really just had to start. Once the ball started rolling, it just picked up momentum. And if you really are an entrepreneurial spirit, then you're gonna figure it out. Mm -hmm. But if you're just sitting back and crunching every single number and every single scenario first, it, you're gonna, time will run out. Somebody else will, will hire you to build their dream. Mm -hmm. And so you've just gotta start, you've gotta push through, you've gotta figure it out. So just start, just go. I love it. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Thank you. And we're super happy that you made it.